Welcome back our viewers. I hope you didn't move from your seat because this is the Bring It On show and indeed we bring it on. Indeed we bring it on. I hope you didn't move from your seat. For those of you who actually just, you know, you sneaked out, please walk back, walk back in. And for those of you who actually just, you know, you were like, you want to fall asleep, please wake up. <laughs> Wake up. There's no time for sleep. There's no time for sleep because sleep is for the lazy man. And now we are ready to bring this topic on. And our topic is how many sanitary pads should a girl use in a day and which is recommendable. And today we have Mrs. Bessem on our set live with us and really to give us, you know, dish us what we really need to know about this topic and how educate, we actually can use it to educate others around us. And now... We have one more question for her because indeed we've been having a lot of contributions coming in and I'm really loving this. Now, we have one more question for her and it is all about uh, disposal, use and disposal of sanitary pads. Now, Ms. Uh, ma'am, I would love to also ask this. Since you said um, the girl should actually have a pad and uh, toilet tissues are not recommended, they're not recommendable, so when they actually go to get these parts, are there specific type of parts they should actually look for? Is there a specific quality the parts should have that they should actually say, okay, this one is healthy enough for me to use? Okay, thank you, Anne, for the question. Um, generally, there have been various kinds of parts. Yes. Okay. I will not go into the brands, but I will just give you the general kinds of parts that exist. We have parts that are made out of pure cotton, lined by cotton. Okay. And we have parts that are made with some kind of substandard cotton, mm -hmm. okay, which whereby the covering is, is, is somehow part plastic, okay. okay, and then we have reusable parts, okay. okay, they are reusable parts, these are the ones that are actually not made out of cotton as well, pure cotton, and we also have tampons, these are insertable parts, okay. all right, they're also made up of pure cotton. And we have pure cotton parts also lined with anion strips. All right. Okay. And all of these parts, they are appropriate so long as they are able to catch the flow of blood. Now, but most of the other parts, okay. all right, the truth is I'd like to speak a little bit about the disadvantage okay. of the reusable parts because According to the research that is being made on reusable pads, there are various methods mm -hmm. by which the users are cleaning them. And there are places that we know in Africa there is no water. There are places that we know that people cannot afford water or their source of water is not as hygienic as that. Yeah. All right? And the, the manner in which to take care of these pads sometimes the women don't know okay all right? all right because there's a particular method mm -hmm. to use a reusable pad hygienically okay. because let me say something and there is something called the toxic shock syndrome all right toxic shock syndrome. yes the okay. toxic shock That's syndrome okay. yes okay. it is now this is something that we ignore completely the toxic shock syndrome stems from a bad sanitary napkin wow. okay or a sanitary napkin that has been put in place for too long. There's a sanitary napkin that is on for more than four to six hours. Okay. Now, according to literature, according to research, it is said that this pad that has stayed in place for four to six hours okay. has the ability to favor the growth of a particular bacteria, okay. right? Yeah. Right, and the woman is wearing it on, and that this bacteria can release toxins that can climb right up from the vagina, go right up to the uterus, and it can cause the toxic shock syndrome. All right, mm -hmm. and you will really not know because the symptoms are usually fatigue, you know, mm -hmm. abdominal pain, yeah. you'll be feeling nauseated, all right, mm -hmm. but you won't know, and it can even come up with a fever later on, right? So most of the times, you can, you can actually have girls who complain of menstrual cramps, and it, it, it must necessarily not be menstrual cramps, you can still be signs of that. No, and the menstrual cramp is completely different from this. This is something that you can have after your menstruation, wow. all right? Really? Yes, yes. So it's really very serious. It's important to use the recommended sanitary napkin or pad, all right, mm -hmm. during your menstruation. It is absolutely important that you maintain very high levels of hygiene, yeah. okay? Now, 
you remember I said that one of the people that can educate the woman concerning menstruation is the healthcare worker. Okay. All right, is the healthcare worker. At my place of work, I do a lot of counseling. I do a lot of health education. Okay. All right, and I don't really have a problem with somebody walking up to me and asking me what kind of pad can I use. Okay, yes, and I, I don't think there's any other healthcare worker that has this problem. I think you can get to an obstetrician, a gynecologist, a midwife, a healthcare worker in general, yeah. and say, what kind of sanitary pad can I use, okay? This is my means, this is what I can afford, and I think it can be done so that we avoid the many disadvantages that come from using a sanitary pad badly. Okay, wow, yes. that's really amazing. So. I believe that our viewers have actually pulled out something from this. So don't mean, don't uh, uh, you know, don't have a misconception. Your menstrual cramps is different. No? It's completely different. Mm -hmm. And most of the times, if you hear some girls complain, please don't just push it aside thinking it's cramps. Actually, take out time to look at look at what is wrong with you so you can better handle the situation. And now we have this contribution which which, which just came in, and it says it depends on the woman. Some have heavy flows, that's lots of blood, and mm -hmm. some have lighter flows. Some have shorter periods, that's four or five days, some have seven mm -hmm. or eight. So I, if I'm trying to understand this, and um, thank you so much, our viewer, for sending in your contribution. It's really amazing, but you forgot to send us your name. Mm -hmm. We really want to know who you are. Please tell us who you are and where you're writing from. Please, I want to know. I want to know my people. It's really mm -hmm. amazing. Thank you so much for sending in your contribution, and you say, it depends on the woman. Some have heavy flows, that's lots of blood, and some have lighter flows. Some have shorter periods, that's four to five days, and some have yes. seven or eight. Now, this person is actually, if I actually should understand you, I don't want to misquote you. Don't come and tell me later. You're trying to say uh, uh, people can use per how the flow. Like, if you actually have heavy flow, then you should use more parts. If you actually have a lighter flow, you can use lesser parts. What do you think about this one? Okay, I think the, the, the viewer, the contributor, mm -hmm. is right. Okay. okay, is right in an aspect. The number of times, let's say, scientifically saying, mm -hmm. a part should not be worn more than four hours, okay? More than four hours, four to six hours. There's always an average range in this thing, okay? okay? Four to six hours, you cannot go above eight hours. Above you cannot. Hours. Wow. No, four to six hours is a range. Okay, so you a range. cannot go above eight hours. Wow. You cannot. You yes. cannot go above eight hours. Okay. And like she rightfully said, the number of sanitary pads that you're going to use depends also on your flow. All right, okay. and it also depends on your hygienically preference. Okay. Okay. Wow. Now there's somebody that just does not want to be comfortable. And my change every two hours, my change every three hours, yeah. my change even every four hours, okay? Mm -hmm. There's not a clear cut definition that says that you have to keep apart for this long. But we are saying that from after six hours, the worst is eight hours, okay. there is a probability for bacteria to multiply when you're still carrying the blood that has flowed up to that number of hours around, okay? That's what we are saying. So, but somebody that has a heavier flow, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. might want to change as much as they want to feel comfortable, comfortable. depending also on the activity that you're carrying out for the day, yeah. all right? Yeah. Somebody that's going to be sitting down and somebody that's going to be standing up, they want to change their sanitary parts differently. Okay. And there's somebody that's going to be going for physical activity, a woman might want to go for physical activity, mm -hmm. and another woman who is going to be doing a less physical work, they'll change their sanitary parts differently, okay? okay? But I'd like the viewers to understand that a part can be changed averagely between four to eight hours okay. but it cannot go above eight hours okay all right wow, wow. that's really yes. amazing so to our unknown viewer who just sent on sent us a contribution mm. i hope you got this right don't just say yeah it depends on your flow but be careful don't like, don't overlook your flow because you think it's lighter and mm -hmm. you think you can just you know Sit on it the take it. No, don't do that. Don't neglect it because you might just be causing yourself an infection. Now, we have another contribution which came in and it says, Hello, I am Brian from Moliko. Thank you, Brian from Moliko, for sending in your contribution. 
he says i would say one every two hours because in as much as i am a boy i believe it is uncomfortable having mm -hmm. to be wet for an hour talk more of two i always make my girlfriend uh i always make my girlfriend you know change herself as frequent as she can wow thank you brian for moliko for sending in your contribution it's really amazing having you join us on the program and coming from a, a, a guy we say he yeah. actually called actually make sure he girls, his girlfriend changes frequently as possible to actually maintain what do you think about this yes i think that is that is good previously i mentioned that the 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 hygienic preference of the lady mm -hmm. is also a factor okay. just like brian is saying you know there's a lady that might not want to move around with a pad wet for one hour or yeah. two hours okay mm -hmm. or three hours or four hours but we are saying that you should not go above eight you should not go above six to eight hours okay all right, all right. we are saying that you should not go above that so don't go, don't go above and, eight, six, and, six, and I must I must mention the, the, the number of parts also you change okay. depend on the capacity of your sanitary pad okay oh, really? yes if you have a sanitary pad that can take 100 mils of blood 150 mils of blood you will know that up to this number of hours sometimes even in the package it is written up to how many number of hours a pad can last okay okay, okay. so but the problem now is with the, the a pad maybe that the, the number of hours is not written in the reusable pad okay because the reusable pad it is not written there how many hours it can go okay, okay. so yeah. it's for them that we are recommending that as much as you hygienically prefer to be dry okay mm -hmm. all right and there are also parts out there that the people that are using the super dry parts yeah. okay mm -hmm. you know it keeps you dry and you don't really want to have the feeling to go and change but make no mistake you cannot go above six eight hours wow. no matter how dry you yeah. feel All that's right. it so no matter how dry you feel you cannot go above six to eight hours please ladies please guys educate your girlfriends educate your sisters fathers educate your daughters mothers educate your daughters it is really really it is really important that we learn to and we practice a healthy menstrual health hygiene truthfully and now we have this i have one key question for you because we'll be going on break very soon so don't get too comfortable i know you're actually getting you're sending in your contribution you know i know you're sending in your contribution so i actually have one more question we understand that uh when it comes to menstrual hygiene and total and we know we actually have to use you mentioned like earlier mentioned we use parts and other like now anybody can just decide to use any type of you know can you just use any type of underwear like, do you just get up, almost you, just, you just put the pad and you just walk out of the house. Is that very okay? <laughs> Thank you, Anne, for that question. But I must say, this question is tricky, all right? Because women, over time, mm -hmm. have grown to have many kinds of preferences for underwear, okay? okay? <laughs> we will recommend that you should use cotton underwear, oh, wow. especially the gusset of the pants should be made of cotton. Okay. Why are we saying this? A cotton, cotton allows you to breathe, all right? Mm -hmm. It allows your genital parts to breathe, oh, okay. okay? So, because, you know, bacteria thrives a lot where there's no oxygen and there's no light, mm -hmm. okay? And I can tell you down there, it's going to be dark. And <laughs> so, you want to use cotton so that you can allow oxygen yeah. to pass across your pants, okay? okay. Now, we are, not, we are not going to give a clear cut <laughs> underwear that you can use because over time there are a lot of women that have chosen different preferences for underwear. Uh -huh. But I would say that the cotton underwear is recommended. And a cotton underwear that holds you firmly, okay, okay. to prevent leakages. Okay. It should hold you firmly and it should be made of cotton. Oh, wow. Okay. So, no, and, and if I must add, okay. your colors should be bright colors, so you can quickly see a stain. Okay. Okay. So you you shouldn't use black. Black is not okay. Black, I, I red. Would, 
I, I will just go ahead with colors, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll just say use bright colors okay, bright that can colors. make you easily see a stain, okay? okay. During your menstruation. Right. You know, after your menstruation, you can use any color. Uh, so, please, so, <laughs> nobody has actually narrowed your mind, but she said bright colors. Yes. Don't ask me what kind of bright colors. Bright colors. Buy bright colors pants. <laughs> so, it's actually the best. And thank you so much, man. But viewers... Sit down there. Don't move. Don't move because we have a lot, a whole lot of things to tell you about this. We've not come to the end of the show yet. We're just going on a short break, you know, and our, and our topic is on the screen, you know. How many sanitary pads should a girl use in a day and which is preferable? Which is preferable? Our contact is right there on the screen. It's right there at your, you know, at your beck and call. Send in your contribution because we really want to know what you think about this. We really want to know what you think about it. So don't move. Stay put and we'll be right back after this.